I'm going to make a link between something called learned sociopathy and uh, corruption in a free market. And there are reasonable concerns down to a philosophical level about, uh, let, let's call it the economic system of a free market. And they're not unfounded, they're inaccurate, and they're ideological, and they're misrepresenting, and we don't have a free market, and all these other concerns. And so I can, I don't have to make arguments against something like uh, anarcho-capitalism, because the, it's just stupid. It's it's stupid from all kinds of angles, and I don't have the level of expertise necessary to untangle the apologetics for it. Uh, but I am, I'm not ignorant of the benefits of examining a philosophy or an ideology, specifically uh, regarding something that I'm essentially immersed in and. Uh, because I'm me, I'm. If I weren't me, I would probably. It would probably all be invisible. I, to me, it would. I'd be swimming in it, and I wouldn't be aware of certain things that are considered truths to outsiders. Often, somebody that's deeply involved in something can't, doesn't have the clarity of, of an, of a disinterested perspective. So I, I do find value in 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 thing in things there, but it's not really the apologetics that I care about. It's it's some underlying stuff. And so I want to I want to not pick apart the foundational benefits of something like capitalism, but I am going to talk about some of the things that happen and why what what we have now is if it if it isn't already bad which i think it pretty much is it must inevitably be bad at the philosophical level and i'm i'm talking from my perspective which is rather archivistic about this so i'm thinking extreme long term and i'm thinking about almost comically exaggerating certain things in order to understand from from here to there and it's 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 something that i'm going to talk about in the future which is how you can take an idea and you can exaggerate it so much so that everybody can agree that that's ridiculous and then you you it, you don't do the fallacy of the middle ground but you examine why something is outrageous and find the parts that are that are useful and you, you find something connecting where you are now and that exaggeration and you actually have an interesting conversation there. So I'm going to do something like that. Um, so first, we've, there, there is an idea of immortality in business. And I see that as, as a problem, assuming that the idea of business continues, which it might not. I mean, the, all of humanity might be swept over and locked down in an unassailable ideology never to recover from that ever again until you know, the, the sun expands and swallows the earth. All of, all of humanity could literally be oppressed by a thing never to find enlightenment now if there is some something there that has our present model of civilization continue like the only success that we've had wildly uh, is this idea of a free market and in every single circumstance everywhere in history it has been the government being small enough to allow something like freedom to exist out there by individual people that that is that's the only thing that's ever found success in humanity ever and i i can talk about about that but 
I don't really want to because I think some of it's maybe suitable for another for another video and so you you've got business the idea of a free market and you have a kind of uh, freedom and unfetteredness that can kind of be shackled in certain ways but ultimately speaking the notion is that competition is the thing that that moderates problems that might arise so for example um, you have a a body of people who can be served by businesses those businesses compete with one another and let's say for example um, one of the businesses tries to cheat and steal and abuse or whatever the body of customers can go to competition and so that what that does is that helps the competition stay reasonable now life's not that simple and there's collusion between businesses and stuff like that but ultimately speaking um, there is an idea there there is a philosophy there does it work yeah kind of um, again it's not that easy but let's let's make it exaggerated let's make it really simple where you've got multiple businesses and they're all kind of competing in the exact same market with the exact same people under the exact same circumstances so everything is 100 percent the exact same between all the businesses from any kind of location advantages any kind of you know social uh, ability any and anything anything right they're all 100 percent the same and we're looking coldly on on pen and paper right now so this is philosophy now what makes one business more successful than another at the philosophical level what would make one business successful is cheating and getting away with it and so um in in a sterile environment what makes one business excel over the next is a kind of a kind of abuse of morality and they are able to outcompete others who are honest or who also try to to cheat and get caught um, and so you end up with a, a situation where in a free market the most effectively corrupt morally ethically however you want to approach the problem the most evil wins now it, is that actually a problem which is a weird thing to consider because in some sense um, it's the nature of humanity to have a certain kind of corruption so maybe it's not the right approach to think about eliminating it completely um, maybe it can be restrained May maybe maybe right but it exists however however we we perceive it it exists and i the only way that it can be made to not exist is by having some higher authority than it moderate it and somehow that higher authority is uncorruptible which which is impossible as well because we've seen that in in like demand markets where you've got an authority over top of it and those are just as corrupt if not more so since there's no competition there you have maybe something like competition something like accountability within members participating in that oversight but but we see out in the real world this is why a free market is as successful it is it as it is it's because we we have seen throughout history and i don't just mean today's history I don't just mean the last couple of centuries of history i mean in all of human history we have seen how centralized authority will always be less successful than a, a smaller uh, less authoritarian less parental government we we've seen that and so it's it's a wonderful dream 
that it is possible to have oversight over this, but no, just no, it can't happen. Um, or rather, I should say something like, philosophically, it cannot happen, and it we must not try to achieve that, because we're never going to get a philosopher king, we're never going to get an uncorruptible body of people, and even if we do somehow, uh, they will be outcompeted by the corrupt who can get away with it. See my previous argument. Okay, so, so you have this situation where businesses succeed based on how corruptible they how much they skirt the line between doing evil and getting caught there's more than that there's much more than that a new technology arises and you can have you can have uncorrupted pure corporations pursuing that new technology and they they end up in an environment where there is no corruption there is no competition like that there can't be and and there's a kind of a, a a spike of purity in that field and that can happen and sooner or later that's going to go through the exact same kind of corruption where there's going to be just a little bit of cheating and stealing of as much as they can get away with and it's just going to be a bigger and bigger problem as more and more companies compete with one another and can get away with a little bit more and can risk a little bit more and they erode the public sense of outrage or they erode the laws that were controlling them or this sort of thing. So there's a kind of inevitability that's a problem that is a problem. It's a problem in human nature, essentially. And so... One of the one of the problems is that it is essentially there's a link between business and politics and the social side of things, whereby uh, individual consumers don't necessarily know how to cooperate in a way that's effective at making ch affecting change against one of those more extreme, more obvious, uh, problematic companies. Um, so they, or, or the extremeness of that corporation also allows them to grab enough power or resources or what have you to manipulate perce perception or plant agent provocateur in protesters against their business, against their industry, whatever, to, to manipulate situations so that there's actually, there's, there's an extremeness of the horrors of corruption it's possible to go off on the deep end so hard that that they become um, quite hardened against outrage against any kind of effective protest against and they they might have colluded cooperated taken over competition and have done that so well that there is no concept of switching to somebody else that they are wholly relied upon yeah, that's that's government right there's no competition to government it corrupts all kinds of problems with that and there was a really wonderful argument that a philosopher whose name i can't remember who i learned about yesterday i can't remember yesterday um who was making an argument about how um a corrupt government is is still better than constantly rebelling and it's kind of it's kind of true but it's kind of an inevitability that most people aren't going to rebel anyway um unless, unless they're part of a mob in which case that's just mobs are just tools from some for some ideology which may or may not have a person behind it and people who are benefiting from it anyhow so um little by little kind of like grains in an hourglass, there is an inevitability of moments of decision which lead to corruption if there is any benefit to be gained from any particular grain, any particular opportunity that might get some benefit from corruption. And maybe corruption isn't even the right word, but I mean, it seems appropriate. Um, I'm, maybe I mean something like sin. Right? And there, there's, 
there's going to be plenty of people who won't fully understand what that means but but you get it enough like it's you can think of it in a religious sense you can think of it if somebody is religious enough to actually really understand that that thing then then it that hopefully that comes across strong enough because that i mean that is what it is right that's probably the perfect example of sin is just a little bit here a little bit there can you get away with that um yeah everybody else is doing it well you do it a little bit more effectively and get away with it well now everything has been done that way so you kind of do things that way the market market needs that kind of thing and all these kinds of reasons that something like a, a company well there's the other problem one of the things that that human okay so so george george carlin has an amazing skit on this this talks about distance between between an angry driver and their opinion of somebody somebody else when that they're that's also on the road and the the further away they are is the more angry and loud the more vocal the person is and the closer they get is the more like hush and under the breath that person becomes and humans are kind of like that where if you're in a room and all you've got is a button and a spreadsheet and you're just like decision 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 and you don't and you have zero impact zero understanding so for example um microtransactions and video games won't use real dollars and cents they'll use some sort of intermediate token system to distance a person from the notion of them burning hours of their life having been employed getting the money converting it into tokens and then using the tokens for things that are worthless even in the context of the game um and it gets even more distant when you got something like a credit card inserted which is one of the reasons credit is just a it it's probably the worst of the first world problems that could exist it's essentially slavery um debt in general if you want to just speak to speak to a person who's new in the workplace who just came out from university about what debt's like maybe maybe they're still in denial but wrangle them and get them down put them on a spreadsheet and ask some basic questions like given your present salary look at what the curve of your salary increasing is going to be and and your living expenses and then calculate with the compounding interest how you're going to pay off that student debt and how long that's going to take and a lot of people will just go down look at that and say wow i went into debt by tens of thousands of dollars maybe a lot more i've got a terrible job and now i need to spend three times the amount of years in my education having no life and take that money and give it away to schooling that i hated with half the courses are worthless for a degree that i that i needed but which didn't give me a job that i can reasonably pay pay off and just kind of like hope for the best and maybe you'll get a raise maybe you get a new job maybe maybe and then right why did i get off on that tangent okay so so the the distance problem exists in members of a corporation because the corporate action is detached from all of the members in it and it's detached way more from all of the for example if it's a publicly traded company all the stockholders don't don't see anything they there's all these layers between them and the corporation and one of the things is the corporation moves on and it's immortal and it's an immortal entity in some cases in some countries it's actually it's got legal rights kind of like a human in certain circumstances and the 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 cells that make it a living thing are all interchangeable you got all kinds of different people that come and go 
And so you've got one person will, will, will come in and then they'll keep their head down and they'll make their money and they'll make some decisions and they'll be individually, they'll individually sin in various ways. And that will, that will poison the things around them. And so they will make those little corrupt decisions, possibly in competition with other members of the same corporation. And so you have that, you'll have that internal corruption and that will influence the entire corporation. And then there's multiple corporations in an industry, et, et cetera. And so you, you end up with this incredible detachment whereby you end up creating a corporate entity that internally becomes, it, it must be cold and detached because it's just this thing with a whole bunch of cogs inside that machine all doing their own little corrupt thing and the 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 face of the machine doesn't have any empathy at all it just acts in the world and it goes on forever so you get this because there is no attached accountability between the actions of a corporation because you can think of it like that and a human you can't accuse the owner of a corporation because there isn't one of treason and then hang them. So you can have corporations that are what? Kind of torn apart, disbanded, outcompeted. Uh, what? Right? And even if you take a, a corporation and you shatter it, that doesn't fix the industry. That doesn't necessarily change any of the products, just other the next less corrupt thing down the chain gets the advantage of picking up all the pieces. So they're just in line. And that next one, it's still, it's just less visible. And so you get the immortality of corruption that just keeps rolling on and on and on. And the only thing that keeps anything in check is hopefully there's this kind of meat grinder of public opinion uh, that will that will tear it apart. And that relies on customers caring or or seeing and sometimes there are trends which will do things like um workers rights sometimes people have enough of a, an international empathy to think about workers rights when there's like a factory collapses and kills three thousand people and they're like a lot of people won't hear about it because of various reasons and the people that do hear about it might not their individual little sin, right? They, they won't care um, or they won't know how to organize or maybe something comes up. And so there's an idea of workers' rights that come comes in. Oh, that's child labor or that's unsafe conditions or that's pollution. That's going to be one that's going to keep coming up. Very recently, that's going to be a... I mean, I think it's pretty obvious. I've been around a long time and I've seen the the fad of environmentalism that's not a very nice way of saying it but but it there's a lot of industry that's profited with the notion of it as opposed to being compelled by the ethics in it and so it's i'm 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 unsettled by it i'm just i'm too many people profit off of a lot of that stuff without there being really so, solid foundational argumentation for a lot of the the technologies it, but it's a i mean humans need to have sustainability or we're just doomed again thinking the extreme long term like um okay so one of the problems with corporations is there there's no concept of just of when one of the members is called out and chewed up and pulled apart for that to also break the whole of the industry and all corporations so that the evidence of that corruption also has the the eye turned to all of the other competitors to see so like if this body was so corrupt that it it needs to be broken apart it needs to be addressed it needs to be sued by the public to to do to remedy the problem the corruption becomes too great we have no concept of not just 
remedying the problem of the that the corruption caused and then remedying the source of it but also taking that and looking at the next the, the upcoming thing the less visible thing the less slightly less corrupt the more successfully corrupt thing we have no concept of wiping the slate completely clean of of founding some new more enlightened for now replacement for all the body we don't know how to do that um even legally politically socially ethically we don't we don't really understand the notion of of seeing a crime mourning the disaster looking at the cause imprisoning the causer then looking at the reasons and trying to remedy the reasons and then trying to remedy all the peripheral reasons we'll talk about a lot of things so so we have a horrific crime and we look at the perpetrator so we mourn the loss we look at the perpetrator we deal with the perpetrator catch them you know accuse them um and passively examine and possibly um free them or possibly right imprison them right we we want we don't want some social opinion doing all the actual justice work we want blindness and to to make sure that the person is protected until there is a resolution and uh, imagining that this person is is the the criminal is actually guilty in reality um objectively right like they they did actually do it not the the successful suit um determines their guilt like let's pretend like they they did actually do it so we've got the morning of the loss the the doing something to to deal with the uh, the the convicted and then there's this examination of well why did that happen so uh it, abuse or something like this and then go oh abuse is bad we should have hashtag awareness no but actually doing something about that and then looking at at that the sources of it well how do we re we don't have a concept the further away we go from the actual you know, press f to pay respects to the cultural the social roots of how any of that could have even possibly done existed how it could have happened in the first place we, we don't have the ability to do that so we don't have the ability to, of finding a, a corrupt industry with a corrupt business taking that down and then having that momentum carry through the rest of the industry we, we don't know how to do that because that that's essentially finding fault with one one guilty party and then that guilt creates a kind of mob effect that now starts interfering with other companies which should be presumed innocent and that, that's a really really serious problem if we if we look at this the crime and then find the criminal and then we're like oh well, what are the other people who are kind of like that person maybe they're all criminals well that that's really bad that's that's <laughs> that's really really bad because you start you start you start pigeonholing and that can be i know this sounds really bad but um actual what the, the police use a term uh, i wish i could remember it off the top of my head and this is how how because there's there's some apologetics surrounding this that talks bad about the idea of something like typecasting where there are trends that are seen that are real like nobody's lying about the statistics nobody's misrepresenting and then what you do is you pay attention to certain elements to to police 
that that thing because the effort placed in certain areas is it's far far more effective to to put resources in certain places you just want to optimize your resources and it comes across as targeting and and you can feel that if if there happen to be a lot of cops in your neighborhood for example because your neighbor was a criminal now how do you feel because technically speaking as a member of the neighborhood now that you've got increased presence you're kind of assumed to be to be maybe guilty like not right away because you're not being charged or anything like that but still imagine that a corporation happens to have a peer that was found out to be corrupt and they were and they were actually guilty for real the eye being turned to them making their lives difficult that's that's unfair that's unfair and it's difficult to imagine it and all of the market being full of that kind of fear you can argue that that's actually not a bad thing um but how do you maintain that that how how do you maintain that much oversight technically speaking that's what the consumer is supposed to be able to do is everything they are a consumer of they pay attention to that stuff that's never going to happen that's just never that you you yourself might care about a handful of things and maybe due to your ideology or your religion you have very specific concerns and the, the most visible stuff is something like dietary concerns where you're concerned about ethics or sometimes it, it broadens a little bit further so for example vegetarians might be vegetarian for ethical reasons and that's different from being vegan which also has a, has ethical it has an ethical requirement but it also extends to not just diet people make that mistake but it also involves it, it is more complete it is more complete ideology about an opinion between humans and animals and so it'll apply to something like uh, leather belts or leather shoes right and that so that will have those people as consumers making more informed decisions and there are going to be some people who will think about maybe they'll hear a hear a thing they're like well i'm not going to give my business to x company ever because they they did this naughty naughty thing and even though the company maybe they made reparations for it maybe they've they've improved but they'll never forgive them so they'll never forgive nike for children working on shoes right and whether or not you have an opinion or you actually know the story behind that doesn't necessarily matter you, you but you imagine that there happens to be that consumer who has certain concerns and this other cons consumer who has those concerns like this person eats kosher or halal or or is vegetarian and that's just food uh, some people will be organic and some people just do it blindly or do it as part of their culture or do it as part of their philosophy or ideology or 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 religion or whatever but doesn't like why doesn't matter and we don't judge people for that the the notion that i'm trying to present is just we do have consumers which care to one degree or another to some success or other and that has some impact on industry okay so so we have no no concept of wiping the slate clean ever so there's always this pervasive corruption that's out there and it is not met by a per pervasive concern of by consumers for every single thing the consumers are only at best a handful of, of things that they're going to care about so there's always going to be a mismatch between the 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 competition of corruption essentially so there's always this high level of corruption that's out there and this lower level of the counter to that corruption there's always going to be this disconnect between them because people businesses are very specific all these individual businesses are very specific for their target thing and humans are both they they have many concerns about many industries. They're the consumer of many things. And 
they have other things to do. So it, it just, it will, one will never meet the other. At best, you're going to have some regulatory bodies, but again, the corruption of centralized authority. Um, so, and the, the, there is the changing of the guard concept within the corporation where it's, it's very much the same, where if internally they have a, uh, an ethical revelation and a purge and they shift out new people, they don't necessarily undo the damage outside the corporation that the corporation has done. They might withdraw a little bit and they don't necessarily have a purge within their leadership, let's say. So there's also always this kind of, of undercurrent of darkness within the management of corporations. There's never, there's never a, there's never a purge in the industry and there's never a purge within a, a, a company that maybe self-regulates, has happened to have self-regulated successfully because some new person comes in and goes, we can't do this because the company is going to fail because they're the public is going to notice this. So, and they quietly have this little revolution, but they don't, they're never going to completely purge. They're never going to completely reset. They're never going to get, become internally ethical. And there's still the problem over the next company over and whomever is the most effectively corrupt is going to win. So there's always this, there's just no helping that. Um, and so, and I've already talked in the past about the problem of a, a, a an evil act in the world might leave a mark. And even if, say, uh, corporate con corruption in a free market does evil, commits evil, and withdraws from it, or is, is, is cut down, um, there's not necessarily any mechanism in place to remedy the damage that's been caused in society, for example. So you, you might have a company that's a horrible worker abuser and polluter, and they might be called out for it, and there might, there might be fines, and there might be heavy fines, and let's imagine they're so terrifying that the company is, is torn apart. And, but that doesn't undo the damage. That doesn't, that doesn't bring back the dead. That doesn't pull the pollution away. That doesn't actually do anything. It prevents it from happening in the future for, for a while at least. But so, so the, there are all these problems with having that freedom because that freedom isn't, isn't self-regulated because these are not enlightened agents because they can't because we're humans and we don't have regulatory bodies because those are also in those are also exhaustible the marketplace is exhaustible they've got they don't have enough uh, interest and um, specialty and availability to actually keep all of those industries in check and a regulatory body on the inside might not be so effective because they can't do a kind of sterilization purge that's effective enough to to do anything other than keep corruption down um having unions or having oversight committees or having government is also perfectly subject to the exact same sorts of corruptions because they're also humans um what what's the solution to any of that well i mean it will be a cultural, ideological, or religious um, compatibility between all participants in all levels of things, from government, through business, through consumers. And if they are compatible and they, they as part of their fundamental philosophies, don't, don't, they are personally ethically impacted more and make more moral decisions because of a cohesion or because of something or that and they all share that in the exact same way only in that circumstance could they all be could could the corruption be moderated at, at some weird sense and then you've got the next country over which 
which may act in in a different and incompatible and more corrupt way and then countries now are competing in a global marketplace or or what have you and and you've got that problem so and at that point you have to have negotiation between the the countries essentially or the industries the global industry for this or for this has to also find its own compatibility and they also have a have to have a kind of ideological similarity so that they can they can have the agreement they can collude to be not as corrupt that's maybe that's possible i don't know that humans can ever get there because we have too many humans that hold hold on to their their individuality let's say or the the group that and that group is distinct so they they want to be a member of their their individual um culture and that culture due to the very nature of culture is separate from some other culture and there's no concept of of somehow bringing them together other than having a gigantic awful um dictatorship that will just obliterate culture and will play pretend like and just force people to all be the same which as it turns out has never worked in the past um okay so i think i've, I've gotten everything off on my mind um hopefully this is a bunch of stuff that has helped me articulate some stuff better and maybe it will have been entertaining or educational thought-provoking for you